and that heat is conducted straight into the cold water around yeah. the element. Right. Now, here's the cool bit, because the cold water is at the bottom, and because when water is, um, gets warm, it expands, that makes it less dense, and then it rises, and that uh, warm water now rises up through the kettle, setting up these kind of currents that flow through the kettle, which are called convection currents, which is why the element has to be at the bottom so that the hot water rises. And that's why, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but if you run a bath, you really need to put the hot water in first and then the cold so that it spreads evenly. Because oh, if you right, put the, the cold hot water in, on the top, the cold stays. You'll just the get a layer of hot at the, uh, at the top. And that's like if you go to the beach and you go in the sea and the sun has been shining on the sea all day, yeah. you'll get a layer of hot at the top and then your feet will be cold. Now, you can so, demonstrate that. I'm going to demonstrate this, exactly. Right, right so I'm going to put this on in case I make a mess. Um, yes, protect your frock. Don't worry <laughs> it's about, all about the suit. <laughs> yeah. right. right. Right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some food colouring into these jars. Now, I'm going to put some red into those two. And I'm going to put some blue into those two. Yeah. Now, ideally, yeah. that will be almost boiled. Yeah, so well, it then... is just about. Do you want it turned off? No, it's all right. No, we no, need how that does it water. know when to stop before you get ah, that far? Ah, clever, yes. So at the top of the kettle, actually in the heating element itself, yeah. there's what's called a bimetallic strip, which is a strip of two metals, and when the water we reaches its boiling point, so 100 degrees, one of the metals expands faster than the other, so the strip actually bends and breaks the points of contact in the circuit, ah. shutting off the electricity. So it's, got, it's quite critical that that uh, type of metal does actually do that at the exactly. right temperature. So yeah. there's two metals yeah. on top of each other, yeah. so it's bimetallic, two metals strip. Yeah. One expands faster than the other, because yeah. all metals expand when they get hot, but at different rates. Just and then it twists like that and breaks the circuit. Like that. Like that. Just okay. like that. So do you want the hot water in there? Yes. So if we put the hot water in here, Mind I'm going to put some cold in as well, so it's not too hot. Right. A bit more. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. So we don't want it too hot. Okay, so... I'm going to put mm. yep. cold water. It's fascinating. It's that conjuring, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put cold water. I'm going to top that right to the top in one red yeah. and one blue. Yeah. <gasps> I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then this yeah. should be warm, yeah. but not too hot to handle. Is it? Right. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so that's going to be hot water in yeah. that one. And it's Again, just the right same. right to the top. Right. And in that one. Now, if you pass me that bowl, All right. thank you. Yes. I'm going to. That's just so You're I don't not make a mess. Throw up or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So, using a very technical piece of uh, scientific equipment, which is my oyster card. Yes. I'm going to. Here's the uh, cold one. So I'm going to take the cold one and I'm going to put the hot. We've got blue about a one. minute. Is that all okay, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to invert it. Oops, there we go. And I'm going to place that one over there. Yeah. Right, keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'm keeping Now I'm going to do it. the same with this one. Now this one's hot. Here we've got cold, here we've got hot. Yeah. Now we've got hot on the bottom. Yeah. So I'm going to do exactly the same. Yeah. And invert it over. Yeah. Look at well, that. Well, would you look at that. So what you can see happening is the hot water yeah. rising up to meet the cold and to mix with the cold. There's convection currents going on in this one. Here, you've got the hot water on top, so this cold water isn't mingling and the colours aren't mixing. Yes. Well, there you are. <laughs> now, to make... <laughs> isn't that amazing? <laughs> now, your questions now. Question one, Joanne from Berkhamsted wants to know, is there a way to stop silver from tarnishing? Right, so silver tarnishes because it's been exposed to sulphur in the air, which reacts with the silver to create silver sulphide, which is a black colouring on the surface of the mm. silver. Now, did you know that if you use silver polish, it will actually take off the silver sulphide? A little layer of silver. Exactly, it yeah. takes the silver as well. So it's getting smaller all the time. It is, but there's a way to take off your silver tarnish without polishing immediately and not lose any silver. And no, all you have to now. do God, is react do. it with... Aluminium. Now, aluminium is found in metal foil. So, what we do is we put the silver 
in contact with the aluminium and it's going to reverse the chemical reaction because silver is more reactive... Sorry, aluminium is more reactive than silver. Probably nothing, though, isn't it? It's all, yeah. <laughs> Can you put it all in, well. then? It's, it's, it's got to there. touch the foil, So it's got it? to touch the foil, exactly. So right. it sets up a little electrical circuit between the silver and the aluminium. Right. The aluminium is more reactive, so it steals away the sulphide part, leaving behind silver and creating aluminium just sulphide. Just like that, just in water? No, we need to add right. some baking soda because it needs right. to be in an alkaline solution, so that makes it a bit alkaline. Right. And ideally a little bit of salt because right. that provides some ions to complete the electrical circuit. And then we just leave it in there for a couple of minutes. Oh, we this should... I have to see. This is exciting, isn't it? Right. <laughs> we should actually be able to smell it happening because the sulphide can get given off as a sort of eggy fume as well. Bad eggs. Um, right. But in answer to the question about how you stop it from tarnishing, yeah. The best way is to keep it away from moisture. And if you put a piece of chalk in your silver drawer or in your jewellery box, that will actually absorb the moisture in the drawer keep and dry. keep it dry. And also, you should um, minimise contact with foodstuffs containing sulphur, like eggs, mayonnaise, onions, mustard, oh, yes, eggs wool in your clothes. Oh, yes, because eggs black, don't they? That's, right, that's, that's why, because right. of the sulphur. Shall we say our silver's done? Right, just to yes, off. let's have a look. All right. Oh, I forgot to say, it's important that the water is really hot, because with all chemical reactions, yeah. the hotter it is, the faster it will go. So this water is pretty... Pretty much boiling, although so, I can see the fingers in. Remind us what we put in there. There's, silver, there's silver uh, foil. kitchen foil in the bottom. Silver foil, just have the silver in contact... Sorry, aluminium foil. Aluminium silver foil. in contact with the aluminium foil. Bit of baking soda, bit of salt. Really hot water, as hot as you can stand. Right. And look, look well, at that foil. would you look at that. Sparkling. Absolutely sparkling. <laughs> Brilliant. Look at these. That's some really silver. Amazing. If you, I know we're really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so cool. If you have a specific scientific question that you need answering, send it in to alan at itv.com. Tweet us at Titchmarsh Show or go to our Facebook page. A big thank you to Dr Emily Grossman. Thank you. Come and give me over. <laughs>